inside, outside, at home, or just about everywhere we go. Most of us don't stop to think about the water we use, even though each of us uses an average of 80 gallons every day. Where does all that water come from? And where does it go? In this part of the country, the simple answer to both questions is here, Lake Erie. More than 20% of the entire world's surface freshwater sits in our five great lakes. And Lake Erie is where our water comes from. And why the question, where does it go, is so important. It's a fascinating journey our water takes to get from the lake to us and back again. A continuous cycle involving thousands of miles of pipe, complex treatment processes that combine science and nature, and above all, care for this natural resource that shapes our environment and our lives. So how does all of this happen? A look at the big picture shows us we live in a watershed, an area of land where rain and melting snow naturally drain to a common point. Northeast Ohio is part of the Lake Erie watershed because its streams empty into Lake Erie. Our water's urban journey starts here, actually about three miles off the Cleveland shoreline, with the help of the Cleveland Division of Water, the agency that supplies water to 72 Northeast Ohio communities. Here you can find a crib, one of four Cleveland water intakes continuously drawing water into large tunnels under the lake bed. Dug as far back as the 1800s, the tunnels lead to the shore, where the water is initially screened at one of four treatment plants to remove fish and debris. Now, water treatment begins. Even though some particles are so small they're only visible with a microscope, they all need to be removed. So aluminum sulfate, or alum, is added to make the particles sticky. As the water and alum mix, the particles stick together and sink to the bottom. This allows the cleaner water to move on to the next phase, the filtration process. Here, filters act like sieves, catching even more small particles as the water seeps through. The water then reaches the final treatment process, flowing through large tanks where various chemicals are added, including chlorine, which is added to kill bacteria, and fluoride to protect our teeth. With the treatment complete and the water fit for drinking, it's now headed your way. To get there, four water plants pump the water to 11 pumping stations and 16 storage tanks across Northeast Ohio. From there, it's off to millions of people through more than 5,000 miles of pipes, one of which leads to your home. Once we've done whatever it is we do with our water, and we do plenty, the used and now dirty wastewater is off again, back to Lake Erie. But it won't get back there until it gets to and through the treatment systems of the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District. The sewer district is in charge of cleaning our wastewater to make it safe again for the environment. When water leaves our homes through the drains, it flows into local city sewers. In older cities like Cleveland, where some sewers were designed over 100 years ago, many of the same sewers also collect water from street catch basins when it rains. That combined wastewater runs deep underground into sewer tunnels called interceptors. Operated by the regional sewer district, interceptors can stretch for miles. They can also be huge. Some are more than 20 feet wide and 300 feet underground. Since older interceptors were designed to carry both storm and wastewater, they have built-in relief points called combined sewer overflows. During extremely heavy rains, they discharge the combined flow to the environment instead of backing up in the system or into homes. The sewer district works to reduce these overflows, but whatever the weather, the interceptors deliver hundreds of millions of gallons of water every day to one of the area's three wastewater treatment plants, where the sewer district treats more than 90 billion gallons of dirty water every year before returning it to Lake Erie. First, the water is screened to remove floating debris. 
Then, it's pumped into large settling tanks where heavy particles sink to the bottom. Grease that floats to the top is skimmed off and removed. Then comes the addition of air and microorganisms that basically live only to consume food particles and germs. After a final bit of settling, chemicals remove any harmful bacteria, and the treated water is released to the Cuyahoga River in Lake Erie. Meanwhile, the solid waste created during treatment makes its own journey through processes that remove liquid, thereby reducing the amount of sludge or biosolids. The remainder is then either incinerated or hauled to a landfill for proper disposal. New technologies even allow for the burning process to generate electricity and conserve resources. As for the water itself, its cyclical journey goes on day after day, from Lake Erie to the division of water plants, into your home, down and out to the sewer district, and back to the lake. It's a critical part of how we live, and there are always water quality challenges, aging pipes and sewers, improper disposal of chemicals and toxins, pollution, even storm water can impact our sewers and streams, our health, and our safety. Agencies like the Cleveland Division of Water and the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District are hard at work protecting our water resources, but we can all take steps to do the same. Simple everyday things, like proper disposal of household chemicals, keeping trash out of street sewers and local waterways, even picking up after our pets. We can also look for better ways to manage our stormwater. We can plant rain gardens, install rain barrels, and support regional efforts to properly manage the effects of stormwater on our water and sewer systems and the environment. We're all a part of Cleveland's water cycle. So if you ever wondered how does it flow or where does it go, now you know.